Well, good morning. This morning we get to ha discuss the question, how does the church disciple women who work, in particular women who work outside the home? You know, it's interesting to me. Uh, I think a lot of times the church is trying to respond to a, a threat from feminism and w women wanting to work outside the home. What I see a lot of is women who would prefer to be home, but for whatever reason can't be. I um, was speaking with a woman actually just last week whose husband works two part-time jobs and she has to work, doesn't want to, leaves her home at six o'clock in the morning, commutes an hour both ways, doesn't get home till after six o'clock at night, and uh, once she gets home it's homework and dinner and put the kids to bed and it's, and then the weekend is trying to catch up and she said, I, I want to be growing. I went through my books and I found all these Bible studies and I haven't been able to do them because I don't have time. She said, what am I supposed to do? How, how, I, I, I can't fit in with the women at church. So, you know, I had some suggestions for her just about maybe getting uh, CDs that she could be listening to while she was in, mm -hmm. on her commute. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, that's an issue. Part of the reality of the situation. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I have a friend who's in a similar situation, and she's married to an unbeliever, and he wants her working. She makes more money than he does, yeah. and she would love to be able to be home with her children. Yeah. And uh, but out of love for him and to try to win him to Christ, she has made a decision to stay in the workplace to 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 allow her husband to lead the family in the way he's choosing, in the hopes that this will win him to Christ. So much as she hates going in every day, she's doing it out of love for her husband and trying to be with her children whenever she can. Um, it is a very difficult situation. So I'm hoping that men will come alongside her husband and help him to see some of the areas in his life where maybe the, the need versus want thing comes into play there too. And does she really need to work? Uh, mm -hmm. I think this is something we see frequently. Women are in the workplace, it's a family decision, but how much of what they're doing is because they need the money or they want the extras? And sometimes that's a fine line and it's, it's hard to discern. And I think my situation in New York is pretty different. I have um, largely a single congregation and I disciple both men and women for work, but um, the women that I'm discipling are single and therefore they are working all the time to support themselves. <coughs> so that's our primary focus, is mm -hmm. equipping for that environment. And you see, you see women who are in that context are spending more waking hours with their colleagues than with anyone else in their lives. And right. these are other people's wives and husbands and, and the bonding that can form, that's one of the ways I'm sure that you disciple them too, is to go in and say, you know, how, how do you form friendships uh, relationships with your colleagues that don't cross a line, where you don't form a friendship that's a violation of someone's marriage, where you don't sort of make it a surrogate family. And uh, where is that a good, a good thing uh, in terms of that collegial relationship? And where does it cross the line? That can be so difficult depending on the context. And yes. I think it's women, I think especially, um, are, are, can be really tempted in those environments. Yeah, and I think there can be, too, even resentment, at least in, because my context is certainly different than, than New York. I mean, I, I think probably in, in our church, we have a very small minority of women who are professionals. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them who work are only working because they have to work. Right, mm -hmm. right. And there can be, I think, among those women, a feeling of isolation and resentment. Mm -hmm. um, resentment, perhaps, toward their husband or the fact that they don't have a husband right. and that they're, they have to work. And then isolation, feeling like, well, all of the other women, what they do all day long is have coffee with each other mm -hmm. and enjoy having fellowship. And I, I think the church really needs to speak to those women and basically say, we, we, don't, we don't look at you as less of a member of the church, a contributing member of the church. It, your vocation 
is different than okay. these other women. And then really maybe even plan events that would really work into their schedule or um, have women that would come alongside them, maybe go and have lunch with them at work. Right. And, you know, so that they don't feel that isolation that we, of course, all feel, but that they wouldn't feel that isolation because they're not part of, you know, what's going on with the ladies having Bible study every Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you make a good point. In, in some prior churches I've been in as yeah. a single working woman, I felt like there was a sign up saying, yes. single professional women not wanted here. Yes. And there's a whole population out there we're not going to be able to reach or engage with unless we have a more, um, broad interpretation of calling. And I, yes. I think you said yes, that well, it. that at various times in our life, we're called to different things. Right. But that calling to um, impact different industries for Christ, yes. to yes. impact yes. different workplaces for Christ is huge. And um, I think sometimes the working professional woman can think that you can go to too many Bible studies. I mean, not that you should have too little time with God, yes. but you can focus sometimes too inwardly yes, yes. and not use all the privilege and influence that we've been given as women in this country to serve in the culture out mm -hmm. there. So uh, trying to have that broader call understanding of calling, yes, I think, yes. is very helpful. Exactly, and getting ri helping people get past that grass is greener tendency and to recognize yes. God's sovereign hand in their calling at that time and, and all the opportunity they have. And what a privilege it really is to be called by God to a specific sphere for a season right. of life. It is an opportunity, whatever it might be. And we have biblical examples for that. Yes. Um, we have Lydia as a businesswoman, and that's a great way to encourage women. If they're using all of their gifts and talents. They're not shut out from the church ideal. They're not, there is no church ideal. As long as we're serving God with our gifts, that should be the ideal. Yes. And you know, one of the things I think that um, looking at people's faith and discipling them through the lens of their work really helps you get to idolatry that might not be um, exposed, but it's deep in your heart. So mm -hmm. jealousy or mm -hmm. um, your um, your fears that you might not be noticed or your fears that God is somehow, you can't trust God for your career or your future. Mm -hmm. um, out in the workplace, it really uncovers those. So it's very helpful um, in terms of spiritual formation, mm -hmm. I think, to address those Absolutely. issues.